Na magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Pasensya na sa, ano, <laughs> sa itsura ko. Galing na naman ako sa derma. So, <laughs> kaya lang hindi ko kayang hindi mag-live because uh, I have new information. Uh, I've been talking to you. Uh, to you know, some of my colleagues in communications at uh, tinitignan ko kung ano ba ang ang strategy dito ng ating administrasyon. Please take note ha, the president very very rarely uh, briefs the media, bihira po yun. So tinitignan po natin ang, ano, ang reason kung bakit dito yung comps ng, ng administrasyon. So, and I talked to some of the, my colleagues and some of the people who are actively involved in comms. At tinitignan namin, tika muna, bakit ganito sila? Bakit, ano, the, the president rarely addresses the public, uh, rarely addresses the media. He does naman. But it's not like uh, any other president. Particularly, nasanay tayo kay Pangulong uh, Duterte. But even then, uh, before that, President Noy Noy, hindi niya rin gustong maharap sa media. Pero he would. And particularly, pagka merong maiinit na issue, siya po ay may, ano, uh, may sasabihin. Gayon din po si uh, former President Gloria Arroyo uh, and then and so on. Uh, hindi ko na maalala rin kasi yung kay President Era. Now, ang isa lang ang nakikita kong conclusion. Ang administrasyon na ito ay busy in busy. But it's not what we think. It's not about nation building. It's not about sol solving the problems of government which in some level they do naman kasi may day-to-day -day functions pa rin ng gobyerno. O ulitin ko. Ang, ang isang administrasyon, it sets out to do something. Yan. Government basically should be able to run on its own. Pero yung development po nito, those are usually pushed by the leadership. So kung kunwari, just holding pattern lang tayo, hindi yan kailangan ng presidente sa totoo lang. But you know, things will get done, but only in the ordinary course of things, the day-to-day -day things. Right? So what is this all about? Kung ang tingin ko dito, it's really about the perpetuation of power. And the one thing that stands in that way is a Duterte or two Dutertes as a matter of fact. So, uh, thank you kay Kulet ko. In other words, the tale is still about uh, the Dutertes. And yes, to the trolls here on TikTok, I know that there are many of you now because you are the new TikTok is now the new, how do you call this, pioneering landscape of your headquarters in Mandanuyong. Don't think that you're unique or that your messaging is something that we did not anticipate. So don't don't think then that, uh, no, that you're all that brilliant because we know who dictates your policy. So um, one of the things that I noticed is Marami po, ano, and the reason uh, we make patol to trolls here, to use your term, is not because ano, we want to give them any, ano, any traction, pero kailangan tinitignan natin kung ano ang rhetoric nila, kung ano yung salita nila, kung ano ang komunikasyon nila, at primary na komunikasyon nila ay hindi yung official channels, kundi yung mga sinasabi ng mga tao nila. Ito po ang tinitignan natin para madetermine natin kung ano ang strategiya nila, saan sila papunta at ano ang dapat ma-anticipate natin. Ngayon, alam natin na ang punteria ay ang mga Duterte, but how are they doing it? Okay, part one is the China rhetoric. Yung ginagamit nila sa China. Ano yung basic? Uh, Traidor kayo, pro-China. Um, si Duterte, binenta tayo sa China. Oh, let's take those three ideas. Is it true na pro-China si Duterte? He was friendly, yes. And he did uh, shut down the U.S. Uh, the usual U.S. posturing sa atin. Na ibig sabihin nun, before Duterte, ang foreign policy natin ay dinitikta ng Estados Unidos, ng Amerika. Kung saan panig ang U.S., dun tayo, parang automatic na hindi na yung pinag-uusapan. Gawa rin ito ng, well, hindi nga pa tayo tapos dun sa ating, ano, sa ating uh, mental colony feelings. Marami pa rin sa atin ang nakaakibat kay Mother U.S. Uh, yung iba dyan ay talagang ano, sinusuportahan din ng U.S. ang mga politiko na siyempre friendly sa kanila. Uh, hindi lang yon gumagawa ang U.S. ng mga batas na extraterritorial, meaning they reach into the jurisdictions of other countries. Ngayon, halimbawa, ang criminal laws dito sa Pilipinas, they apply only to Philippine territory or Philippine territorial jurisdiction. So kung flag carrier yung barko, yung criminal laws ng bansa na yon dun yun mag apply so kung Pilipinas ang ano ang flag nung sa barko de by yung criminal laws ng Pilipinas ay mag apply doon. So ano pa within the embassies and so on. But otherwise, territorial jurisdiction ng Pilipinas. 
Pero ang US, gumagawa sila ng batas that reach into extraterritorial jurisdictions. So isa pa yon sa mga dahilan kung bakit medyo kapit na kapit pa rin tayo dun sa, sa US. Now, binago ni Duterte yan and he went for a more neutral stance. Why do I say neutral? He was not pro-China. So kakaulit at kakaulit ng kabila, halos na tayo rin naniniwala o yung ibang mga kaibigan natin ay naniniwala na pro-China si Duterte. No, he was friendly. He opened up more trade between China but was he purely pro-China. Bakit natin binubuksan tong issue na to? Kasi nagiging maliwanag yung kanilang communication strategy, yung communication strategy nila sa sinabi ni Congressman Erwin Tulfo. Ang sabi niya, oh, may ano, ano ba talaga? Agreement. Um, sabi, parang pinalalabas niya, may agreement ang Pilipinas, si Duterte ang nags nagkimasok dyan. Pinasukan niya ang isang agreement with China by itself. Parang ang feeling mo pag nagsasalita siya, Hoy, may agreement with China, it's automatically a bad thing. Says who? We've had cultural exchange agreements since 1972. May umalsa ba? We've had trade agreements for decades. May umalsa ba? Nagre-reklamo ba tayo? Hindi. So suddenly, may agreement. Eh tungkol daw ito sa BRP Sierra Madre. Na kesyo, ano, he entered into an agreement na pwede lang maghatid ng mag-resupply ang Pilipinas dun sa mga sundalo dun sa ayungin. Pero hindi pwede magdala ng construction materials. Agreement ba talaga yun o one-shot deal? Natin alam. Because tumigil doon si Kong Erwin. He says all that and then he says, si Duterte lang nakakaalam, siya tanongin ninyo. Wow, anong ibig sabihin niyan? This is the Sunny Trillanes School of Accusation and, and Persecution. Diba? Accuse somebody and then force him to defend himself. In a court of law, bawal yan. Kung mag-aaku sa ka, kailangan matindi yung ebidensya mo at walang kay hindi kailangan magpresenta nga ng ano ng ebidensya yung kabila. Kung mahina ang ebidensya mo, kung mahina ang kaso mo. Ay nako Freilan, ano bang pinag-uusapan natin dito? Sabi niya, ano po comment niyo sa verbal agreement na China at FPRD? Sir, kung bagong salta po kayo, makinig muna bago tanong kasi nakaka-distract po 'yan. Unless 'yan po yung pakay niyo. Mataray ako ngayon. Okay. So what was he talking about? Gusto niya to force President Duterte into a position where he has to defend himself over something that may or may not even be wrong, may or may not even be true. Anong sabi ni Congressman Irwin? Si Duterte lang ang makakapagsabi kung totoo yan. Eh bakit ka nang aakusa? Hindi mo pala alam kung totoo. O ngayon, ano na, ang source daw niya ay isang Chinese diplomat who does not want to be identified. Akala ko ba pro-Chinese ang mga Chinese diplomats? So bakit nila sasabihin yun? So, ito yung punto. But let's go back. Was Duterte solely pro-China? Tignan natin, ha? He was friendly. And it forced the U.S. to be friendlier. Ligaw ng ligaw ang U.S. So for almost, what? For four years, the rule was, oh, bay tayo sa China. O, oh, bait tayo sa ano, ganyan, sa US medyo. Ay, magpaligaw tayo. That was the strategy. Okay? So, however, nag-shift siya. Nag-shift siya in November 2021. Nag-shift siya in November 2021 and shifted high gear pro US. Bakit? We were in a, uh, we were in a pandemic. So, ano yung sinabi niya? In November 21, it was shifted to the U.S. because China ships also became very aggressive in the South China Sea, West Philippine Sea. What? Are you hearing this for the first time? Remember, how many diplomatic protests were filed during the Duterte administration? According to Teddy Boy Loxin, over 100. Many of them in 2020 and 2021. Right? Okay? So, what did we do? We filed a protest after protest. After protest, after protest, ad nauseum. So, ayan na, nagagalit na yung mga trolls. Minumura na tayo. Okay? So, ngayon. Yeah, this is, ano, ha? these are facts. You can ask Teddy Boy Loxin. And it was, there were so many diplomatic protests. Ngayon, ang gusto ng iba, hindi pwedeng diplomatic protest. Kailangan may action. Bakit? Pagka tayo ay nag-commit ng aggressive act under international law, that amounts to a declaration of war. Why were our own people pushing for an aggressive act to be done by our government? Simple. Gusto nilang sirain si Duterte. Okay? But, more details on this. In November 2021, 
uh, because the China ships became aggressive, tumigil siyang kausapin ng China. Meron pa siyang public statements. He was ano, addressing the people. What did he say? This is too much. Now, was he solely pro-China? But let's go even further back. In June of 2021, I know, was it 2021? He, he, no, before that, he made the motion or pretended that he would terminate the VFA, the Visiting Forces Agreement. Okay, yeah. Uh, he, he announced that he would terminate the Visiting Forces Agreement. But did he really intend to do that? No, he was using it as a strategy because he needed something from the U.S. Among others, he needed vaccines. So after he told the ano, 20, uh, 2020, thank you for Joey. So in June 2020, he said he was going to terminate the VFA. But at the same time, shortly after that announcement, he allowed Teddy Boy Loxin, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, to delay the termination. Did he delay it just once? No, he delayed it three times. Why? He was negotiating. Okay. So was he consistently anti-American? No, he wasn't. So this entire narrative na maka-China pag maka-Duterte ka is incorrect because what President Duterte was doing at the time was using his mind, his brain. He was strategic. No, baka dami nagsasabi ngayon, eh, laban bawi yan si Duterte, laban bawi. But that's exactly what he did. Laban bawi ang ginawa niya sa mga Amerikano. And eventually he got what he wanted. Sabi so yun, he got what he wanted. Itong tinatawag nilang laban bawe o inconsistent stand ni, ni dating Pangulong Duterte is not an actual inconsistent stand. What he was doing was becoming unpredictable. And that is a strategic stance. Pag predictable ka, alam na ng US, alam na ng China, alam na ng lahat kung ano yung susunod mong galaw. Katulad ng ginagawa ng presidente ngayon, but more on that later. Kitang kita galaw mo. Eh di, papunta ka palang, pauwi na sila at talo ka na. So that's what was going on. Was Duterte pro-China or pro-US or anti-China or anti-US? Neither. He was pro-Philippines because every time he took a stance, it was for the betterment of the country. He went pro-China to get more trade. He went pro-China but at the same time, he did not give in on the West Philippine Sea or the South China Sea, whichever rhetoric you want to use. He went to the ASEAN and asked for a code of conduct. What does that mean? He wasn't giving away the WPS. He wanted the ASEAN to defend the South China Sea. Right? Hindi lang yung tayo yung lumalaban. Oy, kayo, may mga claims din kayo dito. Bakit kayo wala dito? Hindi, yeah, tayo lahat. Of course, President Marcos has abandoned that now. Okay? Abandoned the, all of that. Right. So, okay. Pansinin nyo ngayon, ha? Pansinin nyo yung mga trolls ngayon. Nagiging personal na. Makadutete, pro-China, pro-ganito. Mamamatay tao yung susunod dyan. Why? Because they have no argument against this. These are facts. So, Hindi, well, not ambivalent. So next he says, is Duterte ambivalent? No. Inconsistent would actually be correct. Because consistency is dangerous when you're dealing with countries who can destroy you. Right? Yun po ang ginawa niya. And so when some troll comes up to you and says, Pridor, pro-China. Talaga? Bakit? Dahil maka-Duterte ako? Bakit si Duterte ba pro-China? No. Because by November 2021, he shifted towards the U.S. He renewed the VFA and continued to welcome. The, no, not only renewed the VFA, he participated and allowed the Philippines to be a member, to be a participant in AUKUS, Australia, UK, US triumvirate. He, however, stopped short of saying that we will we will side with you when it comes to the Taiwan Strait. That is what President Marcos did. Okay? Not Duterte. Duterte had a cooperative partnership. BBM has a strategic partnership that includes a pure military alliance. Meaning, pure meaning, he takes fully the side of AUKUS. Si Duterte hindi cooperative lang. Hindi siya nag-commit. But it was still a way of joy going back towards the West. Bakit? Mas malaki na yung inloads ng West not in dealing with the pandemic. He wanted to bring us out of the pandemic and it wasn't enough 
to be dealing with China because China had its own problems with the pandemic. Did he let go of China? No, he did not. Did he claim to, to say na, oh, sige, US na kami na, na, and we're anti-China? No. This is friend to all, enemy to none in action. Okay. Isa pa palang ginawa niya, in July of 2020, he sent the DFA, that steady boy Loxin, to China, or to make a call on China, you remember this? And ask them to recognize the arbitration agreement. So, itong mga call na to, at kayo din, nakalimutan nyo yan? Okay, ulitin ko. He sent Teddy Boy Loxin to, to lay the deal here. Wait, China, masyado kayong agresibo. Diyan sa ano, sa EEZ namin. Masyado kayong agresibo and therefore here. Kinalanin nyo yung arbitration agreement. Dati, pag sinasabi ni Duterte sa atin, eh, wag muna, wag muna, ganito muna. He was only answering, and this was very specific, what he was doing was answering the calls for more aggressive action. Okay. So, pag dumating lang, this is something we have to remind yung mga kababayan natin. Hindi po ginawa yan ni Presidente Duterte yung maging purely maka-China. So pag may lumapit na naman na to, at sabihin, ano bang gagawa ng China para sa atin? Aba, tumaas ang trade natin with China. At sabihin nyo dun sa mga oligarkong katabi ngayon ni Pumulong Marcos. Oh, lumakas yung ano, andyan. Ilan sa mga oligarko natin, ang mga factory nila ay nandyan sa China? Oh, tatawagin mo ba silang Tridor? Ha? Sasabihin nyo ba sa kanila, Tridor kayo? Bakit? Ang binigyan nila ng trabaho yung mga Chinese hindi yung mga Pilipino. Tapos kaming gusto lang namin ng tahimik, ng tahimik na buhay, tatawagin ninyong Tridor? No. Okay? Don't let them because this isn't about that. This is about their communication strategy. And their communication strategy is to destroy the Dutertes because unless the Dutertes are destroyed, they have no hope. They have a snowball's chance in hell of winning any election. Okay? Their war games, meron ding wala. But let's not forget that the most number of diplomatic protests were filed during the Duterte administration. Now, bakit di binabaliwala ito ng kabila? Because they know they are counting on Filipinos to not understand international law. Anong ibig sabihin pag nag-file tayo ng diplomatic protest? Kahit hindi yan maging kaso in the International Court of Justice, you preserve your right to call them to account at a later date. It means, ah, hindi ko pinababayaan yan. Yung parang sinampal ka, uwi ka lang iyak. Hindi. Binlater mo, o nag-file ka na ng complaint. Yung complaint niyan, pwede mong buhayan at a later time. So yun ang sinasabi ni Presidente Duterte na, when we are stronger, sisingilin natin sila. O ayan, tignan nyo na yung mga rhetorika na ano, Tuls. So this is how you have to deal with Tuls. Look at them as a source of information. Tignan nyo yung mga sagot nila. Ah, basta, the best pa rin DBM. Ano nangyaring the best pa rin? Eh, tignan nyo nga yung subtlety, yung inconsistency, yung strategy, yung iwas, laban, bawi, and trying to get what we wanted, what we needed, and making sure at the same time na hindi mawawala yung trade relations and diplomatic relations natin with China, who is uh, was at the time our second biggest trading partner. O, di ba? So, yun yung ano natin, without, and remember, Duterte did all of this. He, he told China, oh, respetuhin niyo yung arbitration agreement. Without promoting hostilities, without bringing us to the brink of aggression or conflict on either side. Okay? So, again, look at what the trolls are saying. Look at what they are saying. They are incapable of engaging in this argument. Why? Because these are facts. And they don't do very well with facts. So, what are they going to do? Pro-China tayo doon. O sige, gusto mong ganyan? Sasagutin ka. Every single person here who understands what was going on, all you have to do is the most number of diplomatic protests which are actually the initiators of a complaint against China were filed during the Duterte administration. Most of them in 2021 alone. Okay? So, bakit ko na-bring up yan? Because if you will notice, again, this is a communications chica. This is a communications discussion. Because if you will notice, the entire communication structure of the BBM administration is being used against the Dutertes. Okay. Aba, 
hindi ba kongreso na ngayon ng bagong PCO? <laughs> Kasi sila yung sumasagot. So, who brings up the the ayungin in the, the ayungin so-called agreement? Right. Erwin Tulfo, who is a congressman. Right. And instead of giving us evidence, he says, ay, kailangan sagutin yan ni Duterte. You laugh out loud. <laughs> Why? Why? Why should he be? Why would he point to ano? Because he himself has nothing to show. It is purely speculative on his part. He has no evidence, no diplomatic uh, messages, no, no, no paper trail, no nothing. Not even the testimony of any person because all he can cite is a so-called unnamed Chinese diplomat who, by any stretch of the imagination, should be giving him information that is largely pro-China. Okay? Because if, the, if China, as a nation, the Chinese ambassador would be the first person to say, wait, may agreement tayo dyan. Did he say that? But even more, was there an agreement na forever? Or was it just for that one particular time? Teka, gugutumin yung mga sundalo ko, hindi ako papayag na magutom yan. So, hakatiran namin yan. China, huwag kayong aangal. O sige, basta walang construction materials. Sure, walang construction materials. Ngayon. But does that bind BBM? Was there any agreement that was signed or anything like that that binds President BBM? No. Diba? That's why Congressman Erwin Tulfo throws it to the Dutertes to answer because he himself has nothing to show. All of this is speculative and at best hearsay. Next, take a look at the overkill of Pastor Kiboloy and SMNI. Oh, ayan na. Tingnan nyo. Tingnan nyo yung ano, rhetorika ng mga trolls. Ang galing-galing mo. Ikaw na kaya magpresidente. So, what's what's the fallback here? Ad hominem. What is an ad hominem? Attack the person, don't attack the argument. Because sa totoo lang, they attack the argument, they can't. Because the facts will speak for themselves. Oh, see? Double standard daw. Without any in indication of how this was a double standard. Without any indication of how the entire argument was even wrong. Without any indication of how, you know, walang, walang counter argument, walang counter evidence, walang kahit ano. Look at what the trolls are doing before you block them. So, ayan pa yung mga tanong na saan naabot ang China conflict. May conflict ba? Technically, tayo, wala dapat tayo conflict with China. We are a sovereign nation. But we have given away our own uh, sovereignty to a certain extent because we have taken hook, line, and sinker the stance of the U.S., right? Yan, sabi ni Alfi Imperial, ikaw ang inatake nila, ma'am, kasi wala silang alam sa mga sinasabi mo. Correct. Wala yan dun sa script. Bakit? It's difficult. International law is difficult. Much more international relations. Okay? Kahit sino, I studied both. Okay? So, ayan o. Oh. Yung mga, mm, wala kang alam. Wow, wala akong alam. But they're actually indicating that they don't know. They have no argument. Why? Because trolls are not hired among the intelligentsia. They're not hired among academics. Can you be able to afford, let's say, a hundred lawyers just tapping away at the keyboard and engaging everybody in arguments that will just go over people's heads? No. See? See, see tignan nyo nyo. Ah. Sa hanay nyo nagmula ang mga troll. Really? And is that anything? Is that, I mean, I mean kung ako kausap mo, ah, is that, does that mean anything at all to us? And yan, don't even try to say na hayaan nyo yung mga trolls. No! You use the topic. You use the thing itself, what they are saying. Okay? And argue on that. Okay. So sabi ni Fortunate Store, Duterte explicitly stated that the arbitral ruling is a piece of paper. Stop being pretentious. You, unfortunately, if I'm pretentious, then you're stupid. Okay, why? Because you miss the entire argument about inconsistency. He says inconsistent, then he doesn't. But etagamo to sa boto. He sent Teddy Boy Loxin to in, to tell China to respect the arbitral ruling. 
And when he stated that that was a piece of paper, that was before that. So China was now relaxed. Akala nila, hindi na, hindi, hindi na gagawin ng Pilipinas na i-enforce ang arbitral ruling. So now, he puts that entire thing in question by sending Teddy Boy, which was an official stand of the Philippines. So, kung iniisip ninyo na maglalast yung mga argumento ninyo na pro-China si Duterte, try harder. Because we asked China officially through Teddy Boy Loxin in September 2021 to recognize the arbitral decision. So, uh, ano yan? Paano yan ngayon? Paano yung argumento mo na hindi sabi niya it's a scrap of paper? And then at a later date, he asks China to, ano, to recognize it. O paano yan? Again, China was caught off guard because that's the entire nature of Duterte to be unpredictable. China did not in any way predict that he would ask them to respect the arbitral decision. Okay? So, ayan. So, pagka nasagot ko na at wala kayong sagot, then it's time to block you. Nasaan yung aking mga ano? Oh, see? Wala, wala, wala talaga. So, once you recognize that they're foolish because they have no means of engaging your argument, then it is time to block and delete. Diba? So, yeah. So, now they're bringing up other matters. Uro ng tapang, uro yung ganito. ganito. Completely ignoring the, uh, the argument that it is his strategy to precisely be inconsistent. Precisely to be unpredictable. Okay? O so now, ang mga tanong nila, o si Kibuloy, si Kibuloy, nasan si Kibuloy, ganyan. Ay, nako. Don't try to, nililihis nyo lang yung, ano, yung argumento. So again, it does not do good for us to say, hayaan nyo na sila. Titignan natin kung anong sinasabi nila because inadvertently, they are telling us where they are taking this. What their strategy is. What is the end game here? And clearly, the end game is to destroy the Dutertes. See? O tingnan nyo, ayan na naman po. Ayan na naman po, oh, ang dami-daming nagre-reklamo bakit daw sila binablock. Because you're not arguing. So sasabihin nila, mga ah, ganyan-ganyan, oh, see? Okay, this is so much fun. Because once you recognize that they have no argument, then you know that they're losing the war. They're losing this particular battle. See? Ayan na naman, bakit pinamigay yung South China Sea? Bakit hindi napigilan ng drug trade? They're asking questions and then forcing us to be the ones to answer. Samantalang, they bear the burden of proof. The burden of proof that they have to over they have to overcome the fact that Duterte asked China to recognize the arbitral uh, ano, uh, decision. The fact that most protests against China were filed during our time, eh, during the Duterte time, sorry. <laughs> during the Duterte time. O eh, paano yan? How many diplomatic protests has the Philippines filed ever since? Diba? Ever since the, the Marcos administration, ilan na po ang final? Ha? Huh? And why? Meron ba? Wala. So, yan. So, ito na po. Nakikita na natin, ha? Nakikita na natin. So, always check. Always check. How are the trolls responding to these arguments? They're not. Okay. Now, Pastor Kiboloy. But before they went to Pastor Kiboloy, it was Inday Sara. So, what happened with Inday Sara? The president guaranteed that she can have the funding that she needs and so on. What was Inday doing? Why did she need her confidential fund? And what other position was she granted? She was given the vice chairmanship, co-vice chairmanship of the NTF LCAP. And the CD, the confidential fund was in support of that. Right. Now, why would they not want the vice president to support the NTF LCAP? Why did they why did they you know, remove this completely? Okay. And they channeled the funds to supposedly uh, the South China Sea without giving us any specifics. So why did they not want the, why did they not want? Okay, doon sa nagtatanong kung nakinabang ako sa China, hindi, ikaw, anong pakinabang mo sa Marcos administration? Ha? Nag-file ka ba ng income tax mo? Baka hindi mo kayang humarap sa tao? Ha? Tao ka ba? So that's the rhetoric. Okay. No, Rally, you can't say that. Uh, can I pragmatically say that if you cannot defend those waters and territories, then it's not yours? No po, no, no. Uh, pag territory kasi, uh, depends on how you claim it. So kung ano, previous prior occupation, then yun. Then yun yung, ano, yun yung basis ninyo. So if you leave it, then that means you have given it up. If you allow a foreign flag to fly over it, you have, that's another sign that you have given it up. Abandonment, yan. 
Okay. Oh, this is so much fun seeing all of these dolls trying to figure out what the argument is. So, okay, Inday Sara. So, why did they not want Inday Sara to be an active participant in the NTFL Cup? Because we didn't see it at the time, but because the administration had entered into an unholy alliance with the Makabayan Bloc. And the Makabayan Bloc is protecting their ideological partners in the field. Okay. What does that mean? Remember, na nagtampo ang makabayan block kay speaker. And so they actively participated in, ano, in, in itong no to cha-cha. Naririnig nyo bang sinasalungat na naman nila yung no to cha-cha? Konti na lang, di ba? Bakit? Bakit konti na lang? Kasi, apparently, they're going to get what they want. Um, from what I hear from insiders in Congress, May pera na sila. Okay, so may, what, does, what does that mean? It means that uh, by their agreement with the existing administration, they get to rebuild not just the, the above-ground organizations, but the underground ones as well. And a return to the Duterte administration, allowing Inday Sara to be part of the ntf -LCAC, means na baka seryosohin ni Inday yung plano, eh, trabaho niya eh. Diba? And and since it is such a popular move to be anti-communist insurgency, well, <laughs> ano yan, if you let her run amok, what if she, she decides na, oh nga, ubusin na natin itong mga to. Alam niya kung bakit? Why we know? Because dati, under the Duterte administration, automatic yan. Merong funding at may mga government agencies na nga nakatutok dun sa 4,000 barangays. Ay, 4,000, sorry sa barangays or areas. Dun sa mga areas, sorry, I, do, I don't know the figure right now. I have to get back to you on that. Pero, ang punto dito is kailangan nilang supportahan yung mga barangay who wholeheartedly cleared their own jurisdictions of the communist insurgency. Right? <laughs> Natawa ako dun sa mga tourists kasi hindi sila makasagot eh. So, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Ito, ito, sabi ni Peter Walter, simple analogy lang, we also have a claim in Sabah, but Malaysia is in control and can't do anything about it. Now, who's in control of Ayung Inshore in Scarborough Island? Hmm. Diba? Sabi ni Rene, nakakatakot po kasi nagpahayag na ng support ang MNLF kay Pastor Kipo. MN, oo. Uh, uh, baka magkaroon pa ng reason si BBM mag-martial law. Alam nyo, you don't have to worry about that because the, the idea of martial law is totally... Ano, totally possible. It doesn't even need an excuse. So sabihin lang niya, ano, ignan lang niya yung mga rally. Eh. Pag, pag uh, ano, masama na yung rhetoric ka dun sa rally, di-declare na niya yan eh. Di ba? So. So that's the other news that I have for you today. Um, the Makabayan Block is back and loving their, their role. Um, they have a kunwari effect na no to cha-cha sila, pero mostly lip service yan. Tsaka hinahijack nila yung no to cha-cha stance natin. So, bakit gusto nilang hinahijack yan? Eh pag sila yung no to cha-cha, sila yung kikilalanin ng administration, oh ano bang ayaw ninyo? O sige, magkunwarian sila ng talks. At sasabihin, no, tama, ilalagay namin yan dun sa, ano, sa, sa charter change, yung kagustuhan ninyo. O edi ano, out na naman tayo. So, which leads us to the, to the next. After Inday Sara, it was Pastor Kibudot. And what an amazing coincidence naman. First, it was about, take note, ha? what was it about? What was the reason kung bakit pinatawag sina, ano, sina Doc Lorraine? Do you remember? Red tagging. But later on, may pa fake news, fake news yan. Pero really, it was red tagging. Bakit? It was the administration's way of also giving to the makabayan. Giving to the, to the left. Oh, Ito, regalo namin sa inyo. Doc Lorraine and Eka Eric, you know, in paper bags or something like that. Regalo yan. So, but that's one of those things that, the, that they had asked for. Aside from funding, from, from funding from Congress, they, were, they wanted also, and then finally, peace stocks. Now, are they going to get peace stocks? Yes, they are. But, will it be a public one? No. 
Okay? Dahil magiging flashpoint yan, baka magkarari-rari tungkol sa mga peace talks na yan, di ba? So what are they doing? They're going into secret peace talks. I hope nobody ever challenges my source on this one. But they're going to go into secret peace talks and wait until later on. Later on, biglang mag-a-announce, oh, peace talks na, raratsyadahin nila. Take note what they did ha, dun sa PI. Kunwari wala, kunwari wala, and then biglang, ito na, quietly, it was happening. So ganun, ito, quietly, it's happening, and then biglang ya announce may peace talks na tayo, and then after two or three days, may kasunduan na kami. So, that was the first, and then it went downhill from there. They were really, it was two birds with one stone. You give a, a gift wrap uh, incentive to the Makabayan block, and then, at the same time, you get a reason to take down a very strong advocate for the Duterte's, SMNI. After that, diba? it wasn't just that. And then, tignan nyo, ha, parang napaka-random, ang bilis-bilis. Congress uh, jails the, the, the two, and then MTRCB, surprisingly, and the NTC, surprisingly, not only it, they suspend. After the suspension, eto na, nag-file na ng, ano, ng bill ang um, Kongreso para maging permanente na yung suspension, suspension na yun. I'm not going to answer any of your 12 questions on videos or what the military is going to do because I know those are traps. I'm not going to answer anything that would amount to inciting to sedition or anything that might be considered libelous or anything that might be considered a violation of the anti-war tapping act. Ano ba kayo? Galingan niyo naman. Hmm. O oh, at mga tuwals, alam ko po kung sa kayo nag-uupisina. Kaya huwag kayong ano, masyadong kampante dyan. Kala nyo naman, ano, na itatago nyo yan? Mariusip kayo. Remember what my job was. Okay. SMNI. And then suddenly, oy, take note, with Pastor Kibuloy, it was also very blatant. Bakit? Yung mga kaso, binuhay yan. These cases were already dismissed. Okay? The case in the US was... Put on ice. Ano yun? Ibig sabihin nun? Pinatulog yung kaso na yun. And Pastor Kibuloy's US lawyers filed motion after motion after motion trying to get them to open it up so that ano, magumpisa na yung litigation. Eh hindi, pinatulog. And then suddenly, at the most opportune time, ayan na naman. Buhay na naman. So called kaso. But now, tahimik na naman yung about the FBI. It's the locals that are moving. Bakit? Kasi posibleng dismissible yung kaso sa US. Baka mahina yun. So what are they going to do? Dito, they can control. After all, baka si Sec Boying, eh, you know, malinga. And suddenly, ayan na yung mga kaso. And remember, they're asking for the cases to be filed here in Metro Manila. Uy, meron pang iba, bakit dinabastos ang Senado? Bastusan ba yon? Ah, I disagree. Because you have a right. Anong ibig sabihin ng rights? Baka hindi nyo alam yung definition ng right. When there is a right, there is an obligation. Somebody has the obligation to ensure it. Now, the state has the obligation to enforce certain rights. Ang sinasabi ng Senado, may right kami to do this. That's not true. They have power, but no right. right? They have the power to find him in contempt. But do they have a right to do it? No, because the right means that somebody has the obligation to give it, to grant it. Sino yun? Wala. Sila din yun. Diba? So it's about power. You know? Bakit binabastos? Because he is not needed in the Senate. He is not needed in the House. The Senate and the House have not indicated whatever reasons they want him to be there and why nobody else can answer these questions other than the good pastor himself. Now, what are we saying also? The, can the Senate and the House do that? Sure, they can. They do have the power. The Constitution grants it. But, Pastor Kibuloy can, uh, so long as he understands the implications and undertakes whatever effects or whatever consequences are made available, are, are, uh, are the result of his actions, go. Oh, alam niyang posibleng maano siya, maaresto siya. Not really arrest, kasi sa court, he can be detained. Okay. Pwede siyang i-find in contempt. And in fact, he has already been found in contempt by both the Senate and the House. O, agawan sila ngayon. Unahan sila kung sino mag, ano, magpapaditain sa kanya. He knows the consequences of that. Yeah. So 
So, sino talo dito sa retorika na to? Kasabihin niyo, binabastos niya, minano niya? Hindi. Kasi what did the, the House and the Senate do? They pushed it. Hmm. Kasi yan, may order ka na. And what? He will go quietly? Ha? Huh? You're asking the head of an entire uh, religion to to submit himself to your ano, to your oppression. You've pushed it as far as it goes. Now, sino ang lugi dito? Sino yung mukhang mahina pag hindi nila mahuli? Do you think it's the, it's the pastor? Of course not. But again, it isn't about Pastor Kibuloy. It's about Duterte. And we know that because Congressman Garin, who is a deputy speaker, has said, Duterte has to explain. Bakit siya yung administrator? Ha? Ma'am? Seryoso? Wala akong masamang tinapay kay Congresswoman Garin. But that really takes the cake. Now, what does the Constitution guarantee? You, you don't interfere in private contacts. What is she doing? Pakikialaman nyo yung ano? Yung... Yung usapan ng dalawa? Eh kung siya yung pinagkakatiwalaan, that's a question of trust. And who are you to question that trust? But, sabi ni Erlinda, sobra na ang mga nangyayari. Diya. Yeah. Pasobra ng pasobra. So, trust is something that they, they, can, they cannot question that. It's a question of trust na eh. Kaya ano sasabihin lang naman ng Presidente Duterte, eh, nagtitiwala siya sa akin, bakit ba? Parang yung mga ating, eh bakit ikaw, binibigyan mo ng allowance na ganito ang anak mo, pwede ko bang questionin yun? <laughs> In fact, baka sagutin ni ano, uh, baka sagutin ni, ni Presidente Duterte, ni former President Duterte, si Congresswoman Garim, paki mo. <laughs> Explain to me why I should answer that question. My God! Ito, sabi ni Hampas Lupang Ambisyosa, Yung pagkadawit ng First Lady, bakit di pinatawag sa kamera? Yung panahon ni Digong dinawit ang pamilya niya humarap sa kamera, bakit si Lisa di pinapatawag sa kamera? Punto ka. Humarap si, ano, si then Vice Mayor Pulong. Humarap si Attorney Man Scarpio. Well, call nila yon. So, ayan pa yung mga, ano, so, what do we next watch out for? Innuendo of these laws. Yung mga tipong, bakit ang daming nagdidepensa kay Kibuloy dahil mapera? As if, di ba? Parang, ang dami namang binabayaran ni Pastor. Kaya ba niya yun? Ha? Kayo nga, ang dami ninyong binabayaran. Umaangal ba kami? Maangal lang kami dahil hindi kayo marunong mag-argue eh. Yan yung problema ninyo. Sabi ni Mang Milet, bakit kaya hindi ang imbestigahan ang mga yan? Kung bakit napaka-effective ng governance ng mga Duterte? Bakit mahal na mahal ng mga tao mga Duterte? At bakit nagawa ni tatay ang mga nagawa niya? Kahit napaka-daming uh, kumukontra sa kanyang pamumuno. Dapat yan ang imbestigahan para matuto sila. Entonces. And finally, part C, which is charter change. So, charter change really tells us what's going on. But, now you take the rhetoric, yung mga sinasabi nila, into consideration. Because really, it is about term extensions. Really, it is about perpetuating themselves in power. Ano yung perpetuation ay how is it going to be done? So, ang sinasabi nila is, oh, hindi economic provisions lang yan, economic provisions. Talaga, ito yung tanong ko sa inyo. Ang laki ng ginastos dyan sa PI, ha? Ang laki pa rin ng ginagastos. You know, uh, Patahimik ng media, mag-set up ng calls, mamigay dun sa mga kongresista, nag-go, nag-go, at saka dun sa mga local politicians, and you know, even all the way down to the barangay, ang laki ng gastos dyan. Now, why would they do it for education and media alone? Ay, education and advertising, as well as yung allegedly yung dun sa ano, on, on matters that were already put into law under the Public Service Act. So, what? Why? Why? Why would you spend that much for this pipichugin? In fact, ang laki ba kung ang purpose nila is to open up for FDIs? Ganun ba karami ang mga educational institutions na gustong pumasok dito? Eh ilan na ba ang international school dito sa Pilipinas? Niluwagan na nga natin yung rules on that by allowing international schools provided that the curriculum is, over, uh, is overseen by the Department of Education. Okay? Ano pa? Uh, advertising. Ilan ba ang mga advertising agencies na gusto natin buksan? 
Tingnan niyo kung anong, ano na yun, yung economic provisions, parang ang feeling ko somebody said, ha, anong babaguhin natin? Teka, teka, anong gagawin natin? So, o sige, gagawa ko kahit ano na lang. Tapos yun nga, kahit ano na lang ang lumabas. But would you spend that much money changing the constitution for these, these pipichugin things and things that they didn't need to change because the law is already working? Hmm. Why? It's not about that. Alam mo sa totoo lang, if they were sincere about uh, FDIs, makikita mo that would be an entire program. Okay, the Constitution would only be one part of it. What are the next parts? Internet connect connections. Um, tax breaks or something like that. Basta making ano, uh, red tape. What did they do with the U.S. trade mission? Meron ba silang nagawa? Meron ba tayong cooperation with the U.S. trade mission? That was part of the deal for the EDCA basis. Ang liit-liit na nga nun, but did we do anything about it? No, we did not. So again, ano ba dun sa economic provisions talaga lang ba yun? Or was it something else? Kung yung economic provisions lang po yun, hindi na nila itutuloy yung PI. Okay. Kung yung econ provisions ay sapat na hindi itutuloy yung PI, but ang PI is necessary to get the Senate out of the way. So, Ang dami ka mapakulong alternatives kung do the administration ito. Cyberbullying at like that. Not interested. Well, not really that much interested. But, doesn't say I'm not gonna do it. So, ano ba naman yung dami ng makukuha nating FDIs from advertising agencies and education? Eh, hirap na hirap na nga ang mga private schools dito. So, sino yung ano, market nila for education? Yung mga mayayaman? Eh, ilan lang sila? Mabibilang mo nga eh. So what's it about? In the end, all of this rhetoric, uh, bakit yung China? Kasi, i, uh, ano nila, yun yung sinasabi ni Irwin eh, na ayan, may agreement, may agreement. Bakit? Kung hindi nila makuha sa pagpapa-aresto kay Duterte under the ICC, they'll do it another way. They'll find another way. Hindi pa po tapos yung kagustuhan nila, not just to destroy the Dutertes, but, uh, to destroy their reputation, but to find a way to detain the former president. Diba? So, yun yun. In the end, that's what it's about. Let me check your comments. Yun, sabi ni Lily Rose, tapos pag dumami na naman ang mga NPA, mag-declare ng martial law tulad ng tatay niya. Sabi ni Ma'am Jocelyn, sana po binanggit din po ng MNLF ang name ni Lisa Antiveras na mabanggit nila ang name ni Martin Lomualdez to stop para manginig sila sa tao. <clears throat> Sabi ni Ma'am Rachel Pai Nakahabol din daw po siya Di ba ko si Lisa yung Tiveres ay may Kaso about PhilHealth kung siya ay namuno At may hatol na yon Wala pong case Ma may, There was an investigation Hindi siya nakasuhan So medyo ano yan Huwag niyong i-pursue masyado yon Kasi sa totoo lang Failure din siguro yun ng, ano, ng Aquino administration. Okay. May connection kasi sabi ni Ration, si Marcos Jr. sa Pulveron Issues, may investigation din sa Marcos. Sabi ni Gaming, Ang maraming hanga sa pamumuno ni BBM dahil tinutulungan ng media pabunguhin ng administrasyon. Yes, and that's actually a very good point, Sir Gaming. Bakit? Kasi yung pagbubusog sa trad media is strategic then on the part of the Marcos administration. Alam niyo kung bakit? There's still a lot of people there who are not exactly online. We own social media. Kung baga, uh, in general, social media is really very pro to tete. At least yung mga ano. Because for six years yan eh. Uh, at established yung followings. Nahirapan silang tapatan yon, Nag-fail yung Ensaymada experiment nila. At ngayon, kahit ngayon, hindi makalusot yung mga Ensaymada nila. But, what they did was to fund anonymous bloggers. Bakit? Hindi sila ganun ka-easy na target. You know, they come in, babakbakan ka, and then they go out. And that's it. They don't have homes. Their own pages are blank. O konti yung mga pinapost nila doon sa mga pages nila. If any, mga lip service, lip service lang. Just to, enough to make it appear that they're real people. But their purpose is to invade the comment sections because they think that that is where the arguments really are made. 
diyan po talaga yung engagement diyan po yung ano yung give and take yung push and pull ng mga argumento how sadly however the tools that you can hire are limited hindi naman kasi lahat katulad nung nung magagaling na vloggers hindi nila kakayanin so yun lang mosquito type attacks pasok sa comment section bakbakin ka tawagin kang panget tawagin kang whatever tawagin kang siraulo tawagin kang traitor pro china whatever that is their strategy on social media what do we do tayo what do we do we talk to our family meron na akong mga nakikita and that's why we're going in this direction ha kasi yung isang strategy ng mga trolls is sabihin lang eh social media lang naman tayo eh maliit lang yan konti lang yan wala tayong magagawa So, what are we going to do? You talk to your families, your friends. Get them to understand what the arguments are. Get them to ano? Get them to see how the usual rhetoric of the trolls they don't really apply, and most of them are false. Such as the pro-China equals traitor, uh, pro-China si Duterte therefore traitor. So, eh, to begin with, he was pro-Philippines talaga. Everything he did was to the advancement of Philippine interests. It was not to advance any other country. Sabi ni Marlita, paano makalusot mga essay, madam, wala namang sustansya ang kanilang argument? Eh, totoo naman nga po yun. Hindi sila, well, but that's not the point eh. They just want to make it look like natatalo tayo sa argumento. They just want to make it look. Kasi baka mamaya mananalo sila, kutan ko, nalo sa kanilang plebisito, sa kanilang mga eleksyon. That's why they're ignoring the election. Um, they need to back it up. Kailangan magmukhang panalo din sila. And so it is necessary to control media, be it traditional media or social media. They have to control the narrative. That is also why they are not, they did not uh, appoint Attorney Glenn Chong. Uh, this is something that they promised him, ha? Yeah, appoint ka. But if you think galit siya dahil hindi siya in-appoint, you have another thing coming. Hindi siya in-appoint not because they wanted somebody else in there. Hindi siya in-appoint because he would make trouble pag nagplebisito, pag nagka-eleksyon. He was determined to clean up Comelec. He still is. Hindi nila makukontrol si Attorney Glenn Chong, which is why to this day hindi siya ina-appoint. Okay, sabi ni... Ma'am Lea, nakakainis na talaga ang Congress at ibang senador. Puro kagarapala na lang ang mga ginagawa. Mm. <coughs> so, if there are any attempts na siraan din si Attorney Glenn Chong, it's probably because he's sitting all the right notes. Isa pang babantayan ninyo, yung high ang gulo. Napansin ko, paulit-ulit na yan. Huwag po kayong magpapa-influensya dun sa mga, high ang gulo, alis na lang ako. Bakit? Hindi yan, that is not our style. Tayo yung may kailangan ng pagbabago. We stay and make sure that we change things for the better of our country. Yung mga high ang gulo na yan, they're designed, that particular kind of rhetoric is designed to make you lose hope, to make you lose faith that we can change things. That is the point of all this. Okay? Naintindihan nyo kung bakit nila sinasabi yan? Bakit nila sinasabi yan? Para sabihin, para magmukhang, ay wala nang pag-asa, huwag na tayong mag-argue, huwag na tayong mag-stay, alis na lang tayo. Ay, katamad na yan, ayoko nang mag-participate. And so what are, they, what are other people going to do? At atras, hindi na bukas ng Facebook, hindi na magkakaano. So anong pagbabago makukuha nyo pagka apathetic na na ganyan? Ay, ang gulo, ayoko na. Ginagamit nila kayo. So... Make sure the reason we talk about this, the reason we talk about their communications is so that we get the information about where they are going and what is it that they are trying to protect. Because as much as we know who they want to attack, we also know who they want to save. Okay? Tandaan po ninyo, I have more than one source already saying, and ine-echo ko na rin si Madam Maharlika, na may mga foreign consultants ang administrasyon na ito. And one of them is in PCO. Why do you need a foreign consultant for your own communications? Well, aside from the fact na med medyo ano sila, mga, how do you call this, uh, kolonyal ang utak, di ba? May nagdidikta sa kanila. And to be fair, may mga interesting din na strategy sila. 
But at the same time, all we have to do is look at it. Kaya yung mga tao nagsasabing, hayaan nyo na ito, hayaan nyo na. Hindi pwedeng hayaan. Kasi kung hindi natin sila sasagutin, magmumukhang panalo sila. But we don't have to, to, to do that. We don't have to give them our audience. Just take whatever topic they're giving. Don't give them the time of day. Chupihin nyo sila, block nyo sila, but answer the topic, not them. Boy, sabi ni Jason Chago, my family are all Marcos loyalists since the 70s. We all rallied for BBM to win. Just last weekend, finally talked to them and we all see how Marcos is already failing. Guys, I don't talk about thinking Pinoy. Hayaan nyo na rin siya. <laughs> kahit rinirespeto ko, kahit yung, yung dati namin yung pagkakaibigan, hindi man kami magkaibigan ngayon at marami rin mga nagsasabi sa mga ginawa niya. Uh, for me, no, that's not something I want to go into. Hindi po ako sumasali sa pagbabakbak kay ano, ATP. Okay? Hindi rin ako namin personal kahit sa mga Marcos. Now, I can't say for the others in Luminous. At saka yung mga ano, teasing comments, I allow that. Just for a little levity, for humor. Pero yung babakbakin ko si Pangulo, kahit si Pangulong Duterte sinasabi niya na ano, kahit yan si BBM. Unfortunately, as a leader, he fails. We will wait until the third year. Ano ka loyalist? Ha? We will wait until the third year. Okay lang sa'yo, walang ginagawa for, ten, for three years straight except to ensure that they are going to stay in power. Oh, please, don't give me that. Sabi ni Free Case, ang Duterte Noya ay ramdam na sa mga congressmen na gusto ng term extension dahil sa pagbisita ni BP Sara sa prayer rally ni Pastor Kibuloy. Mukhang hindi na sila mapag makapag makatulog po. Okay. So ayan na, ayan na naman. Anong gusto ninyong posisyon sa gobyerno? I never asked for one. I never even asked to be press secretary. Tinawag ako ng pangulo and said you're it. Sabi ni Binibining Pilipinas, the still two opposition, the, li the Liberal Party had always had a stand about the issues. So for DDS to question why the opposition is silent is irrelevant. Opposition agrees with some, but not all. Well, I think it makes sense. I don't mind that, you know, that, uh, yeah, why the opposition is silent. For DDS to question why the, for DDS to question why the opposition is silent, no, they don't question why the opposition is silent. The DDS think that they are already the opposition. They ask, why are the yellow silent? But no, ma'am, uh, but I agree with you that they've always had a stand. Totoo naman po yan. And I understand also that the core of the, you know, of the liberals are not pro-Marcos. So, at yun po ngayon, kayo po ang target ngayon ng, ano, ng ibang Marcos communication. And I know about the invitations that are issued to events almost on a daily level about people who, are, who, form, part of, who form part of the core of Lenny's campaign. Sabi ni Christopher Yu, our Southeast Asian nations are enjoying an economic rise, yet we are still begging them to come. Salamat sa mga OFW, they're the heroes building our nation. They're the heroes keeping this nation afloat. Without those dollars, good luck. Sabi ni Jack Jacinto, are you related to my teacher? So, Trump winning in November might greatly diminish the power of Philippine Congress since Trump favors Duterte. Uh, not only that, uh, Trump does not favor having foreign troops, uh, U.S. troops in foreign countries. Namamahalan siya. It's expensive. And the money can be better spent somewhere else. Salamat OFWs for making, for keeping our economy afloat. Totoo yun. Ah, okay. Sorry, Visa. I'm on your side. I'm echoing that. You said something in the past. Rally said, oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize, Visa. I misread it. I apologize. I'm going to go to talk to you. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes. And thank you very much for your dedication and your passion. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's hard to find people who are still passionate about it. Because you know, it's hard to find people who are still passionate about it. Because you that's still them, ha? Yung mga, hi, ang gulo, para ayoko na, ayoko na, ayoko na, ayoko na, hindi na ako mag-engage, atas, atas na. Pwede naman hindi mag-engage sa social media, pero mag-engage kayo in person. Yeah. 
Sabi ni Hey Jude, they say na all of this is within their timeline and by September, a war will commence. What will happen to us? Let's see. Nag-commit na tayo eh. Diba? We moved from a cooperative partnership to a strategic partnership. And that strategic partnership made a commitment to be part of the, to, parang, ano ba yun? Parang, we now are on Alcos' side with regard to any issue in the Taiwan Strait. Sabi ni Pedrino, so it's up to the men in uniform kung pipiliyan ng pera o bayong. Sir, actually, no. No. It's up to us. And they will join us if they see the righteousness of the cause. If they are going to protect the people from the state. That's written in the Constitution. Sabi ni Ma'am Binibini, Pilipinas, thank you, Attorney Tricks. Napaka-polite ng response niyo to Pinks Like Us. Ma'am naman, I was never rude to you guys, except one, it was your candidate. But the rest of you, mahal ko kayo, eh. Pilipino kayo. Eh. We still do not buy that the Duterte are better than the Marcoses, but you have shown grace with your response. I respect you. And you have my respect as well, Ma'am, because you actually phrased your question very politely. Hindi ka namin, pangako, walang bastusan dito kung maayos naman po yung tanong. Hindi po namin ginagawa yan. Pero ang ano ko lang sa inyo is maraming salamat kasi naniniwala naman ako na mahal niyo naman ng bayan eh. Iba-iba lang talaga yung paraan natin. Parang iba-ibang religion lang. <laughs> Pero ma'am, welcome po kayo dito anytime. Sabi ni Gio, but thank you attorney for loving the country more than the politician. Sana lahat hindi biased. Ah, tayo po yung magtuturo noon. Ano yung rule, di ba? Kung sino yung nakakaintindi, yun po ang magiintindi. Pero hindi tayo titigil sa iintindihin natin sila. Engage natin. Katulad niyan si Madam. Maayos naman siya magtanong. Wala namang bastusan pagka ganun. And for all you know, there's some common ground that we can find. Yun po yung point natin. Lahat tayo Pilipino. And I'd like to think na lahat tayo nagmamahal sa bayan. Yung iba, just in really unusual ways. And I'm not talking about the pigs. Ito sabi ni Mark Paul, di naman po kami kasama sa nag-commit. Mahihirap lang kami kung gusto sila ng war, sila na lang muna, unahin na ang pagkain namin. So huwag niya naman sabihin na ano, na mahihirap lang kayo. Kasi sa totoo lang, marami kayo. Tayo. Sana. Join. Feeling joined. <laughs> Kasi nararamdaman ko din po yung, yung kurot ng mahal ng bigas. So huwag niya pong sasabihin na mahihirap lang kayo. Huwag din tanggapin yan. Pero ang sinasabi ko is, marami kayo. Yun yung advantage. So ang kailangan lang namin is, natin, is to organize ourselves so that people will get the information. We don't have to stay on social media all the time, di ba? mag engage din tayo in person. Sabi ni Mel, nakita na po ba yung cut? No, hindi po. I'm hoping na yung nakapulot sa kanya is taking care of him. So every time may nakikita ako nakapost sa Facebook na may may nakita silang ano Siamese na palaboy. Tinitingnan ko kung markings ni Kenny yon eh kasi it's never him. And we're still looking just hindi na kami nagho-hope. Sabi ni Toxwax, ang hirap itawid ang pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay pero laban lang. Naku, salamat po at laban lang talaga. Sabi ni Ate Jennifer, mas marami tayo attorney, tayo ang masa eh. Sabi ni pangarap ni Kuya, dati sa abroad ko gusto magsettle pero nung nakita ko yung katotohanan, gusto ko na rin hilahim panahon. Panahon? Pa pa dito. <laughs> diba the least that the government can do is ensure na merong opportunities for all of us to do business. Yung kaso, ano bang inaatupag nila? Ito, term extensions. Kaya nga galit na galit yung call sa akin sinasabi. Imbis na sabihin nila, hindi totoo yung term extension na yan. <laughs> Ang sinasabi ng lang, economic provisions yung babaguhin. My darling, as if naman, constituent assembly pa rin. It's still constituent assembly. And in constituent assembly, pwede kayong magpasok ng kahit ano because you still have to make a motion to introduce the proposed changes, or those three proposed changes. Eh, paano kung magsabi, ah, hindi, dagdagan natin. Hindi tapos. Lalong-lalo na if Congress acts alone. Sabi ni Israel, we OFWs at work are mad at BBM and we thank you, attorney, for educating us daily. So, kung suka na po kami sa admin ngayon. 
sad, but it, it only means na mabigat talaga ang ating dadalhin. Bukod sa bubunuin natin yung pang-araw-araw kung saan tayo kukuha ng pangkain ng mga kapamilya natin and so on, uh, kailangan din natin isolve itong problema para hindi tayo forever ganito na humahabol. Hindi natin, sino ba, who wants a life like this? Na you're making just enough, habol ka to the next paycheck. Pwede bang ganun? Hindi, hindi talaga. This is not a life. They have to give us a quality of life. <laughs> a good quality of life. Para we can appreciate man lang yung, simple lang naman ang joys ng Pinoy eh. Whatever it is we do, we want the whole family in on it. <laughs> Sabi ni Yunis, dumadagdag po sa problema natin itong administrasyon na ito. Yung gusto ng gulo, sana sila na lang. Kung makagulo man, dapat nasa unahan yung mga anak. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hindi na nga eh. <clears throat> Actually, ang hinihingi lang natin dito, yung katapatan ba? Yung, ano kayo lang ba ang kumikita? Kayo na lang ba ang mayaman forever and ever? Kayo na lang parati? Kami? Yung kailangan nyo lang kami pag eleksyon na? O pagka may referendum, gano'n, para pang tatak doon sa mga kagustuhan ninyo. Kasi sa totoo lang, kung anong gusto nila, naipapasa nila eh. Except, may times na nagigising ang taong bayan. Sabi ni Christopher, we should not be, we must not be an ayuda nation. Sabi ni Jester, good evening, share ko lang, nag-ask ako sa LTA Carby, ano nangyari sa libreng si Kai with 1.3 billion budget. Ask ko daw DOTR. Ay, hala. Hindi ni release. Oh dear. Gusto ko pa naman sana si Sek Bautista but it's going to be tough defending that. Sabi ni Glenn, basta po masarap ang bigas, okay na sa mga Pinoy kaso nagmahal pa masarap na bigas. Sabi ni Jean, tama kung gusto nila ng gulo, paunahin mga anak nila lalo na yung mga walang utang na loob na congressman na nag-OJT kay <laughs> Sabi ni Cleo, shout out po, napaka-polite niyo po for giving us good info. Good vibes lang po. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am ba? Uy, pag nami-misgender ko kayo, sabihan niyo ko ha. Sabi ni Matt, Matt, maganda po yata di sila i-block attorney. Malay natin, matauhan ng mga yan. E di, i-share ninyo. Yung iba naman, pwede na ninyong i-excerpt eh. That way, hindi tayo ginugulo dito sa ano. Pwede matitino yung mga tanong. Hindi yung mga call tanong. Sabi ni Mel, nung nagpunta ako sa SG, naiyak ako kasi sabi ko, ba't di ganito ang Pilipinas? Kaya naman pala, ng, kaya pala ng ibang bansa, nakakapangluho lang pala. Kapunta na po kasi sana tayo doon. However, ayun ang nangyari. Ayun, no, sabi ni, it's me. Attorney, sabi ni Kong Garin, dapat ituloy ang PI. Oh, ayan na! Gusto nila yun eh. At saka ano, mapupurunada ko, ikita sila. I, I mean, may pondo yun ni. Eh. O nga, sabi ni George, pati sa YouTube, may mga ads na din yung mga calls ni Tambi to promote him and so shade on the Duterte and PACQ. I agree. Minsan, dito pa nga sa amin, eh, nakakalirg. Aloka. Sabi ni Visag, medyo awkward man sabihan, pero honestly, kompleto na gabi ko pag naririnig ko yung live ni Atherin. Salamat sa paulit-ulit. Dapat nga, may bayad to. Salamat kasi, libre. Eh kasi, di ba, Pwede ko naman i-exclusive itong mga to. Ay, ang problema, ang mahalaga, marinig ito ng ibang mga kababayan natin. So, nagpapasalamat ako dun sa mga nagsusubscribe. Kasi, actually, yung subscription na yun, tulong yun eh. Ano, para tuloy-tuloy ito. Um, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. So, muli, naubos <laughs> na yung boses ko. Maraming salamat sa inyong pag, pag pakikilahok dito. Um, Maraming salamat. <clears throat> Maraming salamat sa lahat ng sumusuporta sa amin, uh, sa lahat ng yung lumalaban pa rin. At ano, lahat ng hindi bumibigay dun sa mga retorika ng kabila tulad ng ang gulo, yung, na, yung mga ganoon. So mga hindi rin bumibigay dun sa mga nagsasabing paidor. <laughs> yung hindi na naaapektuhan. Kasi sa totoo lang, hindi nagamit ng mga tools na yun. Uy, thank you kay Kulet ko. Hindi nagamit na pera ng mga tools na yun. Eh, pera natin, bayad natin yan sa ating ano eh, buwis. So, pwede rin naman paglaro-laroan sila. Maka kumihita naman tayo kahit paano ng konting saya. 
Kumbaga. Kaya yung mga ano, but just be careful guys, wag pong maglalibel, ha? Wag pong inciting to sedition, inciting to rebellion, terrorism or anything like that. Okay? Sunod tayo sa batas and ano, and the constitution. You don't have to give people space on your walls, by the way. Kasi private yan. That's in the, in the nature of a private space. You can exclude people from that space. Don't let the tolls bully you into, ano, you try to shame you into saying, eh, binablock mo naman kami. Of course, binablock ko kayo para lugi kayo. Para sabihin ng mga boss ninyo, wala kayong na, ano, na post. Binlock kayo ng lahat ng mga taong, ano, <laughs> taong binabantayan ninyo. Okay. So, muli, maraming salamat. Kitakits ulit tayo bukas. Pasensya na at namumula yung mukha ko galing sa Dorma. Thank you very, very much. Hindi sa Dorma sa nagpa... nagpa mm, di ba? Kainis. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I also appreciate everything that you you do for us. Lalong-lalo na pag pinagdadasal nyo kami. Maraming, maraming salamat po sa inyong mga dasal. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Sabi ni Ate Jennifer, next na lang ang pag-gift. Maraming salamat in advance. Thank you.